football sports fans. Uh, this would be episode 2 of our inverter rebuild series. Uh, we've been getting some good work done uh, today on basically adapting the original uh, DMOC uh, power stage hardware uh, to our own design uh, based upon the, the open source inverter. So, uh, instead of me nattering on for the next 20 minutes, let's get some close-ups here and show you guys what we've been doing. Okay, so, as we're hopefully seeing here, we have removed the uh, DC bus capacitors, all six of them. Uh, they're 450 volt, 1800 microfarad caps. Um, that were on the uh, laminated bus bars here. And I removed those guys in order to access this fellow here, which is the uh, current sensor card. And as I had uh, theorized in the, in the previous video, these are indeed LEM HTFS 800P current sensors. However, utilizing these for our current sensing uh, would be possible but is somewhat complicated by the myriad of supporting circuitry that Azor seemed to have put on this particular card. Now I could of course simply isolate the current sensors here and uh, you know utilize the card still just with the current sensors but because I'm trying to keep the original hardware um, as basically spares uh, I decided against that and instead I went to our original current sensor board which as you will recall uh, the pitch of where the, the Hall Effect sensors were placed just uh, didn't suit where our uh, phase cables go out to the motor. So rather than go down a lengthy affair of a redesigned board and so on, because I'm under a bit of time pressure with this project, I want to get the car moving for summer. Uh, what I elected to do was to remove one of the current sensors and what we'll be doing here is we'll be just quite simply hard wiring it uh, the three pins here back to the three pins on the card and we'll have this whole affair uh, fixed down here with some probably with some Tech 7 or Tiger Seal or another very good uh, adhesive and we have added the uh, added quite a long uh, ribbon cable this plugs into the control board and we have a sensor cable here for the heatsink temperature sensors which we have here from the original Azor setup and we'll be getting all those guys hooked up so once I have this wiring done here and I have the current sensors locked in I'm going to be able to put the uh, bus capacitors back in place put things like these uh, these um oh my god my head's gone nuts these bus bars uh bus bar plates back in uh bringing our phases from the igbt bricks back to the cables here so that's all uh fairly straightforward i'm not going to bore you you guys to death with that whole setup these two cables here are for our dc bus voltage sensing so we'll simply bring them in on some lugs here uh, in place of the original tail. So quite a simple setup there with the uh, current sensing. Sure, it's not a neat PCB setup kind of thing, but we're still in kind of prototype stages with this inverter. So I just kind of decided to do it this way for expediency. So what else have we been up to? Well, <clears throat> it's our current sensor. So the next thing uh, that we needed to do uh, was to make our driver board for the transistors. So what we have uh, here 
is some oh what's this material I think it's an acrylic material that I just happen to have it's three millimeters thick and uh, what I did was I cut it out to the very same size as the original driver board drilled it to fit the support pillars which then match down into the screws going into the heatsink mounted my three driver cards um, on it in suitable loca locations wired up a common power rail and then the drive signals so we got uh, six drive signals coming out and power here and then each transistor has its own tail uh, for the Kelvin emitter and the gate. So what I elected to do with with these guys as opposed to having something that I would solder to the IGBT pins, I took a leaf out of the um, I took a leaf out of the Azure setup and I actually got some of these small uh, spade crimp terminals that fit directly onto the IGBT terminals got a pack of these guys from eBay during the week and they're, they're a 2.8 millimeter spade terminal for anyone that's interested and they're very cheap I think I maybe two or three euros for a pack of 50. So this gives me my driver board which will basically uh, screw back down in the same place there as the original let me connect all these cables up to the transistor terminals uh, but I'll be only able to fit this when I have the bus capacitors back in here so that's why that's not screwed on there at the present time. So that gives us our current sensing, our transistor drive and the last piece of the puzzle, I can get it from over here, is our, um, our main logic card. So as you can see, all as I've done here is I've taken a piece of copper clad board, cut it out the same size as the original um, Azure control board, which is this monstrosity of a thing, drilled it uh, to fit its own uh, mounting points and then mounted my new uh, control card on here. Now I've just got the USB connected up to it, so I can, uh, so I could just test it, program it, and uh, make sure that we can communicate with it uh, before fitting the card into the inverter properly. So that's all working uh, very well. We're testing the sensor card here as well today. These IGBT drivers have been tested, so it's just a question of trying to pull the whole thing together into a uh, into a working inverter that we can test here on the bench. So we're still in the kind of messy stage where I'm building stuff, but uh, I think we're making progress. Um, and one very last quick modification that I made was to the dig it out of here to the actual lid of the box uh, I don't know if it's going to come out too well but what I did was I got one of those chassis USB uh, connectors just drill a 22 mil hole here and it gives me a USB through so I can plug my uh, can plug my USB from the control board here into this guy and then I have a, a sealed uh, external USB port for programming and communications with the controller. So that keeps everything very simple. Uh, there's a nice web, web interface that we have, obviously that you'll have seen in previous videos relating to the controller build. So that's about it folks. Uh, I'm not going to drag this one out too much. I know you must all be quite uh, kind of bored seeing me doing all this stuff. Uh, but it's part of the process, it's got to be done or we don't get to drive the car. So one thing that is beginning to strike me uh, is as I was taking all this apart it's, it's, it's becoming easier for me to see where the money comes into these things, particularly when you look at all these cards out of the original. Um, very manufacturing intensive, very heavy on components. 
this is one of the things that I like about the uh, um, call it the uh, open source kit is that it's a very simple uh, circuit. Um, uh, I'm thinking that with some uh, with some redesign, it could be made into a single card contro controller uh, in inverter um, at very low cost. So I think this is something that I'm going to revisit. Um, uh, at once I get the uh, Panzer on the road, I'm probably not going to take on another uh, car project for a while. Uh, so we, we we might start looking at some of these, uh, particularly this motor inverter stuff. I think has got some um, has got some um, areas in it that we could benefit. Um, at least now that we have a processor and, and uh, software here that actually works, it means it's just a hardware problem and I'm kind of more of a hardware than a software kind of guy. So, okay folks, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching and uh, we'll be back with part 3 fairly soon we get all this stuff button back up and we'll be actually running some tests hopefully spinning a small uh, 3 horsepower in the industrial motor here on the bench and um, getting this baby re re ready to go into the car so thanks for watching and stay with us there's more fun to come